This week on the Perspectives podcast, where did you begin in band music? I started um, from being around bands since I was in high school. Uh, I was living in Bath Village, and we had the guys and from the village who always used to meet up and. You know, we beat old pan and thing and so start farm a band till one man get a keyboard and next man get a guitar and you start to feel like you can get in a band now, you know, so I started out with a small band. In 2014, is it fair to say Tebulus gave up on music? No. You would have continued putting out music? I I, I would say I gave up on Ultrasonic. Why I gave up on Ultrasonic? Because I felt like Ultrasonic gave up on me. I left the band in 2014. Why? life i was dealing with a lot of things in life a lot of personal issues and i needed some time for myself and so mm-hmm. and i had asked them to give me some time off and they didn't take it nicely you 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 leave in the band would have been the demise of the band wouldn't you say that i i think the evidence would say it i, I don't have to say it. what's the move that you hear to announce Tonight I'm here to announce that I'll be performing with the core for this year, 2022. I'm joining the core band. So what's really up with the core? Master Blow the best person to answer them questions, you know, but present. So so coming from a band with a history of turmoil, like Ultrasonics, um, would you say moving to the core team would be a good move? Because we see over the years, people like Speedy was around people like Miller come on from the team of recently and gone back. So you think going to core team is a good move for Tebulus? Definitely. Any move. Definitely I don't want anybody to feel like the core made any special reservations for me to feel like um, mm-hmm. anything to do with other members not being in the band had anything to do with Tebulus or anything like that because I tolerate men. We live in a risky world, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the Perspectives podcast is brought to you by True Vibes Island Prints. For the best quality t shirts and prints, True Vibes is your only choice. The Perspectives podcast is also brought to you by J Ink Tattoo. For clean tattoos like these, book your appointments today. Welcome back to Perspectives Media. Tonight we have a cultural icon in the building, isn't it? But before we get into it, people remember to like, share, and subscribe. Because without you liking, sharing, and subscribe, the platform can't grow. Yes, remember to follow up on Facebook and Instagram at Perspectives Media. Yes, me. So, we we'll get into the episode now. But they, as I said, we're there with a cultural icon. <laughs> the one and only. <laughs> Tabulous. Oh, yeah, man. Introduce yourself to the perspectives from Yeah, man, you know, so it's Tabulous, you know? Yeah. So, who is Tabulous? What is Tabulous about? <laughs> well, you're asking for a lot there in one way, but I think yeah, we are we are from the, the entertainment scene, you know. I've been in bands over the years, so. Mm. I would assume we're here in this capacity tonight. All right, so <laughs> you're here in your entertainment capacity tonight. Yeah. So, um, where did you begin in band music? I started um, from being around bands since I was in high school. Uh, I was living in Bath Village, and we had the guys and from the village who always used to meet up and. You know, we beat old pan and thing and so start farm a band till one man get a keyboard and next man get a guitar and you start to feel like you can get in a band now. You know? So I started out with a small band and then ended up learning playing bass guitar shortly after that. Mm. Played around with a few little hotel bands and so on. And then we, we had the only little village band. And what was the name of that village, village band? The band was called Supersonics. Supersonics. That Supersonics. Was from village. And how, how far <coughs> how far did Supersonics make it? We made a few albums, but at the time, you know, we were young boys and we were just chasing dreams basically, but nobody would really bring it to reality. Mm. Shortly after that the band had break up, I played with another band locally that we, so, we call Wildfire. Before before going to Wildfire, what happened to Supersonics? <laughs> That, that caused it to break up? At the time, we struggled a lot with equipment, um, proper management as well. And, you know, you had the other bigger bands who 
would um get your members to come and play with them sometimes and so them guys just basically <coughs> excuse me left the band to farm other big bands some of the guys mm-hmm. went with casanova some went with well like i said i had ended up with wildfire as well after oh, oh, the, so the, the leaders in that band had left oh and in that band you was just the i base, was a bass man in the band, yeah. in the band yeah so where did where did um the second band you entered go to how far did that band that go? was another local band that when that was a band it was running a few years before me and then it went on for about two more years and um the leader of the band had left the island same way Mm. And shortly after that, we had started a band called Ultrasonic. Yeah, Ultrasonic and is that's, a big thing. That's why I big, really started planting yeah, roots. Ultrasonic is a big thing in terms of Nevis. Yeah. Because yeah. um, my introduction to band music was Ultrasonic. I remember coming to Nevis 2012, August the 24th. And I miss culture. And my mother tell me I miss all the excitement. Mm-hmm. But 2013 <coughs> now, the first time I go in a town and I see a band. Because growing up in Jamaica, you, you not really see no kind of, none of them kind of music. The, the only time you will see a band is at something called a night night. You know, mm-hmm. that's when people dead. And that's that's the only resemblance we could draw from. And I remember seeing Ultra Sonics coming through town for the first time. And I was amazed to see like how people react to the kind of music that and the man on top of the band was <laughs> devilous is me so going into ultra sonics now um joining ultra sonics what were you in ultra sonics in the beginning state because you were a bass guitar player originally so how did you transform now to a lead singer so ultrasonic is basically the evolution of supersonics yeah it was mostly the same core members from supersonics mm-hmm. who um we had gotten um somebody to sponsor the band yeah. because i remember i told you we left supersonics and so some of us went in casting over some in wildfire mm-hmm. and so now we got somebody who had interest in the band before yeah. decided to bring us back together to farm oh, ultrasonic okay because you said mm. they it was due to the lack of equipment right. while and proper what, management right, while right, supersonics right. okay so ultrasonics brought the proper management <coughs> and the proper equipment yeah right so how far did ultra make it ultra made a good run for about 11 years we had quite a few hits we travel abroad we went to um uh, if you if you don't mind i would mention some of the islands that we, we, we performed a lot in well outside of St. Kitts uh, of course we perform in Tatola we perform in St. Thomas St. John St. Quai we had a trip to England in 2004 mm. we, we also went to Antigua a couple of times we went to Guyana once we basically that's about it Mm. So, um, locally in Nevis, y'all would have got good reception. Yes. Right? What was the reception like when you go out there in the world? It was good as well, but I will be quite honest with you. I think we were a little under experience in terms of facing them kind that, of crowd. Then. Yeah, them type of crowd. Then. Mm. At them, them days, uh, you know, lead singers would just stand up and sing. Yeah. You know how soca is now. Soca is a high energy. High energy music. You go up and you run up and down, you sing, you get the crowd pumped. But them times that uh, the singers and them were just the type who would come out and just rock and sing the songs and so so people were a mm-hmm. bit you know confused as to what type of music we're trying to bring across but some persons who knew the band before mm-hmm. were receiving the band different yeah because um to be honest with you too if you really look at nevis music at that point it was very reminiscent of Calypso yeah. in terms of the delivery, even some of the sounds in you know, the music at right. that point. Right. So maybe that's that's why you all would have had that energy, but now going out in the world. So um, you would have listed a lot of places you went. So over the period, period of time that Ultrasonics was in, wouldn't you say you all made some improvements in the performance yeah, we made we made we made a, a great impact mm-hmm. the band actually grew good from how we started mm-hmm. you could feel the difference when you know you go out and people would ask it for things that they're familiar with your playing because they know when you play it 
yeah. they enjoy it the best that way. And okay. then when other musicians start to come around and asking you questions about how you get things go, mm-hmm. you know, like I think people even had us higher than we had ourselves. Right, right. That's right. the impact we had and yeah, we didn't because, know. Yeah, yeah, because um people looking and mm-hmm. as small as Nevis be, they're outside outsiders looking because you would find that the wider diaspora people who travel overseas them play a part in terms of how the culture and the music travel because me coming to nevis i've made nevijan friends that have exposed a different side of jamaican culture too. Right, right, right. you understand so that's how culture kind of spread you know what i mean so back to ultrasonics now um what would you say was the highest peak in ultrasonics <laughs> we had quite a few high peaks, you know. You were the first one. <clears throat> be real honest with you. The trip that we that we did to England, it was a real high point for us. Mm. The band was in great demand and a lot of US territories were seeking to get the band. But we had a lot of struggle getting the US visa. That oh. was one of the downfall of the band in the beginning because after that members started feeling like management wasn't doing enough to get the band some visas but that time we couldn't get into the u.s territories and then we ended up going to england and the turnout was really good mm-hmm. the reaction the crowd reaction and everything was really good because so we had a lot of people yeah. from nevis yeah who live in england as well and y'all were headliners for these we shows headliners for wow. each show wow and it was actually like a celebrity feel like yeah from people say um that's the guys in front of the band from Nevis. Everybody, you know, coming, running, asking your questions and that kind of stuff. You know, yeah. It was a very high point for us. Yeah, and at that point, what was the 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 main song? For the, main, the main song for that at that time was Swinging Time, Walking on a Batty. Yeah. Yeah. So at them time, the them song, they are big song, I'm sure. Big, big song. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so being, being a lead singer in, in a band at that point, <laughs> what was it like in terms of overall how you, how you managed to maintain a level head and not get tired of yourself well at that point i wasn't a lead singer either oh i was bass man still you were bass man I was still bass man. so so at what point did you become the lead singer <laughs> i became lead singer in 2007 mm. that's after the band the band had broke up in 2006 Mm. Yeah, so it's, it's a lot of rocky journeys the band had. Like I said, the band had some struggles early on first, you know. Like I said, when we reach to that level, we feel like the band would have taken off and some of the guys take it a little literal and felt like they needed to either break up the band or go and farm another band. So I became lead singer because while playing the bass as well, I was playing bass and doing background vocals yeah. and I would have lead songs on the album. Mm-hmm. And then you know the lead singer yeah, yeah, was a good friend of mine. Um, in doing some research for this interview, I saw some videos with you actually playing the Play bass, bass and singing. And sing. yeah. yeah, and the video they are from a way back, yeah. like long time. Long time. Yeah. So so um, you speak of a breakup. What was that breakup about? The guys thinking the band should have been further on in the in the industry. Mm-hmm. They left to form another band. Uh, uh, okay. and basically left ultrasonic and then you become lead the lead singer the management went and they got some young guys to take over the band mm-hmm. and they called me one day because i didn't go with the, with the group eh? yeah i i was big and staying with ultrasonic so mm-hmm. i didn't i didn't join them yeah. but i didn't i wasn't associating myself with ultrasonic still at the time so oh, they went oh, and they okay. got some young guys from saint kitts who had a band mm-hmm. and then they had asked me to come and check out the guys and the guys i'm interested when i went uh, the guys on them tell me by table us we want to come sing with the band you know, we know you could sing too yeah we are bass man guitarist drummer everybody there so mm-hmm. come sing with the band i listened to them we vibed it a little bit and I said, we get a shot. Mm-hmm. And we started doing something back in 2007. Yeah. And luckily, the biggest song from Ultrasonic came from that same group, which is Searching. Mm-hmm. I think everybody knows no Ultrasonic so, from so you, Searching. So, hold on, hold on now. Mm-hmm. You would say Searching is a bigger song that, uh, than, um, wait, what's the name? The Nivision song. True Nivision. True Nivision. Globally. Oh, really? Tunivision is a bigger song locally. Mm-hmm. Musurgeon is a bigger song 
regionally, globally. So who wrote Searching? Me. And so you wrote, you wrote the song and the rhythm and everything else was produced by the by, by guy from Sync It's yeah. Right. Yeah, two so, seconds. So, so when you find that big song now, was there some kind of intention for those original band members to now come back in the band? Not at that point. Mm-hmm. But they did come back a few years later. Mm-hmm. Because that same listen me right, ultrasonic wave here, that same group from 2007, they left in 2008. Mm-hmm. And after 2008, we kind of messed around with another group with the expectation that the original guys were going to come back. Oh, oh, and they, okay. keep, they kept delaying it and delaying it and then they eventually came back in 2010 so ultrasonic story is a wild story you know yeah a very wild story yeah um so now you find searching what were some of the other big songs that came out of ultrasonic from the second group or the first group the, the, the second group we didn't have much big hits like that mm-hmm. i think searching basically blew everything out of the water there were some others the old one i would call double bubble mm-hmm. they had an next one called juicy ladies yeah but searching was searching just so was big. The, the outstanding yeah, song yeah 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 so all right ultrasonics is no more today what happened to ultrasonics ultimately <laughs> I left the band in 2014. Why? Life. I was dealing with a lot of things in life, a lot of personal issues, and I needed some time for myself and so. Mm-hmm. And I'd asked them to give me some time off, and they didn't take it nicely. Mm-hmm. They had it as I was abandoning the band. So you find now some of the things them that I had relate to persons in the band who I consider to be friends. They started hearing out my business and talking stuff you know basically exaggerating a lot of the stuff that i had shared with them personally and mm-hmm. so he left me in a position of not wanting to go back mm. and that's exactly and what in, happened in 2014 is it fair to say tebulus gave up on music no you would have continued putting out music I, I i would say i gave up on ultrasonic why i gave up on ultrasonic because i felt like ultrasonic gave up on me mm-hmm. yeah so <laughs> All right, you 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 leave in the band would have been the demise of the band, wouldn't you say that? I I think the evidence would say it. I I don't have to say it. the mm. evidence. Yeah, definitely. You <laughs> leave in the band is what's the demise of Ultra Sonics <laughs> because, and you would take take some of the responsibility for that then. <laughs> I, I would admit. I wouldn't take the responsibility for it. I think you should take some of the responsibility for that because <laughs> you were the main man behind the band. You were the face of the band. You Without see? you, there is no ultrasonics. I'm gonna t- tell you, right? If if when I left the band, I had said, I better hide this band won't break up now that me left. Mm. You think the band would have broken up? Yeah. Yeah. Because you are the face of the band. I kind of feel like somebody like, might want to prove a point. No, but. it's like if Shug, if Mention was to leave Sugar Band. Mm-hmm. When you see Mention is Sugar Band. I, you were I don't know if I was band. Ultra Sonic. You were, you were Ultra Sonic's well, band. It seemed that way since I left. No, it seemed that way. <laughs> it, it, it was that way. Because, all right, think about it this way. When you return to um music mm-hmm. in recent times and wet fit the wet fit stage it wasn't tabulous returning to music yeah? it was ultra sonic returning Tab- to music ultra, yeah, yes music. it yeah. was t- tabulous from ultra sonic you dig what i'm saying so so that's a, ul- ultra sonics is tabulous and tabulous is ultra sonics i was if if if, if we won't put it in <laughs> technical terms yeah. then. <laughs> right all right so you move on from from band music so leaving band music you you didn't feel like there was a void to be filled in terms of yeah, the music in nevis because yeah. from then you would have seen a certain decline in, in terms of the music because back then it was mainly nevis bands in terms of culture um, uh, juvenile it was dominated by Nevis bands, but from the demise of Ultra Sonics, we see shortly after that, Odyssey fade away and Juve became more of 
the St. Kitts band is taking over and so on. But the only band that, that would have stayed relevant during those times was the core band. So wouldn't you say there was a void left by you? Yeah. I think because the other bands were competing with Ultrasonic as well. Mm. I think they were basically using Ultrasonic as a benchmark. That, that's the difference with, with Coco Co had the focus set on their goal. But I think some of the other bands were focused mainly on competing with mm. Ultrasonic. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That was the problem. So now that there is no ultrasonic to compete with, mm. I don't know if they don't know how hard to push or how hard to drive. Like they don't know how good they be yeah. because they're not being compared to anybody else. Mm -hmm. That's the void for me. That's why I see looking oh, at it from oh, the outside. Oh, okay, okay, okay. So, in terms of music now, returning to music and seeing the appreciation you got <laughs> in terms of returning didn't that inspire inspire you to make a return full-time to music yes but not in the same capacity as i did before mm. basically i'm a little a little change now you know a little more mature now mm. things different so i would like to kind of tread lightly mm. i've been mostly observing mm -hmm. you know like people who used to go to dance when I used to be in the dance, most of them now is just leaning on the wall. You know, it's a whole different age group taking the dance floor. So I got absorbed differently. You know, I, I, I can just come back and expect that what I was doing before will work for people right now. Right. Right. So, all right. Tonight, you're here to talk about a revelation, basically. You're now, what's the move that you're here to announce? Tonight, I'm here to announce that I'll be performing with the core for this year, 2022. I'm joining the core band. Okay, and what capacity are you joining the core band? Joining the core band as a vocalist. As a vocalist? So, is not as a lead singer then? Well, a, a lead singer, we can see that around here. So, but if you mean like to say as a band leader, not in the capacity as I was with Ultra, mm -hmm. but yes, as a lead singer, lead vocalist. So, so you will be producing new material? Are you be using the old material? We'll be producing new material. We will, so we'll be coming out as core, mm -hmm. not as core diluted with Ultra. Right. <laughs> <laughs> <You know? laughs> right. So what prompted this move? I miss, I miss, I miss the, the, the music scene. You can't deny that. Like I said, I took a, I took a break. Mm -hmm. I had some things going on in life, which I think the years had proven good that I, I, at the time I had a lot of regrets leaving the band because like you said, as a year had to pass and you realize the band really gone because of you. You know, you start to feel a little guilty and so on. Right. But the time was good for me to basically look back at myself as well too because there were a lot of things about me that I didn't really like. But you know, to a question that you asked earlier about when you're leading and you're on top, mm -hmm. if you really know how to control yourself and keep yourself in check. Mm -hmm. And the mature me now, looking back at me then, I could see that I wasn't really in check. Mm -hmm. You know, so I had time to reassess myself and the way I want to approach it and so on. And then, you know, I started working with the Culture Armor Committee in 2017 because, well, I, they started the Soka Mona competition in 2015. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to be on the committee, mm -hmm. couldn't get on the committee, and then I get on in 2017 because you know you sort of miss it and you want to be. And I realized too, we lacking soccer artists in Nevis, mm -hmm. so I wanted to be an inspiration for other young soccer artists who want to come. I you know a lot of them comfortable dealing with me and so. Yeah. So that's why I started back with the committee in 2017. In 2017 and 18. A few times they asked me to come and perform and so on and I always declined the offer because at the same time too I don't want people to feel like I only come back to deal with so come on out because I want to be performing because that wasn't my intention. Mm -hmm. But then you know, being in it, being around them, you start to miss it more and more. Mm -hmm. We had a reunion in twenty nineteen. I like the run that ultrasonic. We had a reunion and the mm -hmm. the Richards four in one. Mm -hmm. It was a good one. I like it. Um, people I like it as well. But the group, 
Ali guy is playing in other bands, so I don't think everybody was ready to just say come back and let me pick up all and can run with it again. Mm. I I would have probably give it a shot in a in a in a different from a different angle as before, but that didn't happen. Mm-hmm. So the guys went back to the bands they were playing with before, and then um persons asking me no one again to perform uh, you know do one or two little parties and then master blue came up with the idea in 2021 for a tune for tune yeah which was a tune for tune clash with me yeah. and easy yeah that was a, that was a, that was a, a good yeah that was a good one yeah and he made over a few of the beats and then original songs that we had and so on he kind of gave me the drive and me always wanting to do a few songs here and there you know i've been in dialogue with master blue no one again about that and I guess last year things started formulating and I, I started saying in 2023 I coming back out definitely either making some songs or doing something with a little group doing some gigs here and there mm-hmm. and Master Blue reached out to me in December about making a move with Core mm-hmm. well of course I asked him you know what's up with the Core because I know Core have singers Right. And so, you know, we would have spoken, we met a few times and we spoken about that. Mm-hmm. And so, he tell me that he's going to work with me for 2023. I tell him, no, I can work with you too. So, what's really up with the core? I'm also the best person to answer them questions, you know, but I tell you, I, I could tell you from why I started performing with them in December. Uh, you know, we started practicing and everything, mm-hmm. just basically trying to build and get a new sound. I, I come from a different sound. Yeah. I would say so ultrasonic sound was slightly different to mm-hmm. to core. But being worked with uh, Master Blue in the past, it's not really hard working together. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, Co itself is a young band with young members as well. So okay. there's a lot of chemistry we're trying to build now try to get a, a song right. that we could present so so coming from a band with a history of turmoil like ultrasonics um would you say moving to the core team would be a good move because we see over the years people like speedy was around people like miller come on when the team have recently and gone back so you think going to core team is a good move for tabulous definitely any move right now to make music is a good move. Can't really think about what would happen. So it's not really a, f- a future-proof move then? Well, I wouldn't I wouldn't go against that either. Right now it's about living in the moment, you know. Mm. We can't always think about how we think it would turn out. Mm. Because each time you join something new, you always feel like it's going to last for long. Mm-hmm. And if you keep that in your mind, you might be making the breakup come sooner. So mm-hmm. right now, I am about, if, if you tell me you want to do some things and I check your vibe and your vibe working for me, mm-hmm. I am about riding that shit. That's what I'm about right now. Not, not, not anticipating you know, that things could go bad. No. Yeah, but sometimes <laughs> sometime you have to cut you, you I, as a big man then, you have to think about what you're getting involved with isn't it and sometimes you have to assess situations based on what is being presented with to you yeah i know that and you think joining the core team as the lead singer is the best move for you it's the best move right now Mm -hmm. to make some music and go out and make happy make people happy keep the core going and keep everything good (laughs) table us back on the scene you know i I just know anybody to feel definitely i don't want anybody to feel like the core made any special reservations for me to feel like um Mm -hmm. anything to do with other members not being in the band had anything to do with tabulous or anything like that because me and all them guys talk as well Mm -hmm. master blue talked to me i told him to that you know i i would have reached out to the previous singers and so and touch base with them to find out exactly what's going on and so because i'm that type of person you know anybody to feel like me come for step on your thing Mm -hmm. so I telling you right now, any move to make music with people you're familiar with making music with and making people happy is a good move. Being a holder guy or a more matured fella then, Zane, would you say you're relatable to the young people because music is a young people sport as you would have referenced earlier, even the crowd that is in the party now, parties now versus back then is a much younger crowd. So joining the core team now, would you say you're relatable to that younger audience? Maybe not half the bat, but I could be. 
I, I would like to think that I am middle age. I could relate to the older folks and I could relate to the much younger folks. Mm-hmm. That definitely was one of my concerns getting back in the game. Like I tell you, you know, you go out and you see the age range of persons who are attending um, Fets and so now. And as you could see, to the culture change over the yeah, last yeah, five, de- ten years, culture change big time. We we have social media now as a big thing. Mm-hmm. So you know things that you could have get young people distracted with long time ago in the dance. You can't get it because they got a phone. Funny the time you get a little boring, they got on the phone and then they got in the bathroom take pictures and then things. Eh? Yeah, yeah. So yeah. you got to make sure you keep their focus. So mm-hmm. that is something that I thought about deeply mm. so looking at the music being produced in nevis and looking at what's happening in saint kitts then what would you say is the difference or is it better or worse than what's being produced in i think the competition is better in saint kitts and mm. competition I always bring out the best the of best. us yeah. yeah i think that's 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 what i think it's not that nevis artists are not making good music they're not competitive enough to make them want to do more yeah we find over the years we making less and less songs mm-hmm. um and by making less songs we're producing less hits as well right and that's the thing we, we don't have the competition the thing is though in saint kitts a lot of the, the bands them and so they they their rivals but they know how to get together to do business in Nevis, we hold a personal grudge a little too hard. That but is the problem. When you find out the intricacies of what really are going on about music in St. Kitts, I would beg to differ because they are very much diff- divided. Not when it comes to doing business. In terms of business. In terms of business, though? Yeah. I, I, ne- you know, I never see that. I, I beg to differ. Okay. Because... If you really understand what's going on in the music in the same kids, it, the competition did it. The Eltic part of the competition did it. But the toxicity is there, John. Mm. Yeah. That's one of you, the. All right, you see, when you're inside, when you're on the inside, the grass is always green up on the other side. On the other side, yeah. Is it? So you in Nevis would, would, would see one thing that's happening in Nevis. Yeah. But if As you really look, yeah, kids. when you really look at what's happening in St. Kitts, you realize why. Well, that's the same. just from it, my it, observation. Yeah, it, it's six, six and a half dozen. Yeah, the same thing. Same thing. Yeah. When mm-hmm. you see a bigger market too, so it don't affect them as much as it would affect us in Nevis with a small market too. Mm-hmm. Two bands, three bands could still play in St. Kitts and hold a three to five hundred people. But in Nevis, if you got two to three hundred people going out, you can't have two and three um, functions the same night. As opposed to in St. Kitts and still pick up good money. Well, again, it comes down to the logistics of things. Because if you really look at it, two or three big events are not happening on the same night in St. Kitts. Nah, minute, it, minute do, it do sometimes, you know. Rare. It sometimes. Rare it, it, it rare. <laughs> it rare. To me, it's a, that's a rarity. Like it, It's like... You know what I mean? It it rare for that to happen. Um, think these people are easy, yeah. Trust me. <laughs> well, well, you might have a point there. <laughs> you might have a, you might have a point there. So moving on now, in terms of bookings, we don't see Corban playing out much. Are there plans for Corban and Tebulus to now be more active in terms of performances? more outdoor performances that, that's the intention i think mm-hmm. management will tell you more about, about that when you talk to him but mm-hmm. that's the intention right now so like i say you know we just a month basically started practicing and mm-hmm. we have to break away from practice to do a few gigs now and again but yeah i would I expect that as practice get better mm-hmm. we would be setting ourselves up for more gigs we are also trying to get live and using stuff like this to help and promote the band so that people know now i think people after the lockdown the band didn't really get off to doing much more this is just from my observation as well eh? you know culture Armor had come shortly after and that was the focus so coming out of culture Armor, they didn't really get out to do a lot of new stuff yeah and so now that we have a new group mm-hmm. that is what we're working on so what can the fans of core band expect from Tebulus? 
tabulous mm. <laughs> <laughs> and what is tabulous <laughs> i just I, i'm more mature tabulous mm. I, i wouldn't say you, you wouldn't be the same fun loving tabulous just a little bit more cautious tabulous mm-hmm. but uh, i plan to bring the same level of entertainment the same level of energy mm-hmm. to the fans also and we're listening to the fans and also to hear what they want as well and how soon can we begin to hear the new products or the new sound of corban i think one of the the earliest we have we have i think master blue was saying he's trying to line some things up at five trees at big six at um at the agriculture op- open day february 11th is which is um five trees feb february 11th mm-hmm. those are some of the dates to mark when we we're basically mm-hmm. taking the scene publicly in nevis yeah we perform we perform in zinc it's two times since we traveled to monstrat and mm-hmm. for new years yeah and but but you would have been traveled traveling playing the new stuff are the old stuff most of the old stuff yeah, yeah. so so now february 11 and beyond we can look forward to you singing the new stuff yeah then. man yeah man of course right yeah. so that's that's a lot of exciting <laughs> to look for them yeah man all right you don't know anything so tell us <laughs> for end of this interview what would you say separates tebulus from all the other bands and all the other singers within saint kitts nevis i just think my style is different mm. my my style jiggy funky i could get funny on the mic now and again hey. i could get lively i bring a, i bring a different flavor i try to bring a different flavor coming from a man who do a lot of chanting and singing and playing that is one of the struggles that i have because i used to play you know listening to the band and so on it, kind of tie everything in so i feel like i kind of have an influence on the way the band would play i don't know if the band might play different to accommodate me as well but i think mm. they would know what time it is all right <laughs> all right you don't know in a table us big up yourself you know, it's Love a pleasure respect. having you on the podcast Love respect. pleasure you know, being people. here as well remember for like share and subscribe master blow Oh, and the hands soon in the big car. Oh, and oh, I'm to the court. Oh, I really are going out the court. You dig what I'm saying? Why is it that you just out everybody so? But anyways, before we reach, <laughs> before we have to get into all of that, you don't know people. Remember, like, share, and subscribe. Perspectives podcast, the top quality content. You don't know until next time. Peace. <laughs> Hoi, and I said nobody now believe it. <laughs> well, if they me a say I me a beat it, me and the pastor me not go preach it to a we all it down. Yeah, man, it's Dejo, you know what I mean? Giving you a different perspective on Perspectives Media. Easy. Perspectives Media.